Hey guys, welcome back. Okay, so I'm expecting this video to be fairly short. Um, we're going to be doing this section 3.8, all of this, but um, it's all pretty quick stuff. Shouldn't take any time at all, really. There's no real errors to go over from the last one. The only thing I want to kind of do is maybe clarify something because I don't think that I really explained it very well. As I was editing the video, I, I noticed I wasn't really going over it as well as it could have gone over. I want to talk about, let's go to the EMV series graphics modification. When we did all this stuff in here, let's go to the E drive and downloads. There was this whole bit and it's in here, I think. Yeah. So we got all this wrapper version stuff and we got this stuff. This is the thing we modified EMV local INI. Um, we also connected to the ENB host and this D3D9 DLL, and we've got it in a weird place. We've got it in downloads, ENB series. The reason I've just kind of stuck it here, and in fact, I probably should, just for the sake of being consistent with what they're doing, change this to temp, because that's what they called it. But it doesn't really matter what's in here, because what's happened is in our F drive under ENB manager, We've got these two folders, configs and versions, and you'll notice if I dig down into here, we've got the D3D9 DLL and the ENB host in here, and also in configs we've got the Vidian ENB configuration, which has our ENB local file. So it's been copied over from the temp file. So this is where actually it's going to be living. Um, now there's two parts to an ENB manager. Oh, and by the way, guys, I went looking to see what ENB stands for because I never really have known. And as far as I can tell, nobody knows. Um, Probably Boris knows because he wrote it, but it might be something in his language. He's not um, an English speaker, I guess, uh, I'm assuming. Um, so no one really knows what that stands for. I, I looked, and as far as I can tell, nobody knows. So we'll just go with it. So there's two parts to an E and B. There's the version, which is the part that, that Boris wrote, this 2.9, which includes the, the D3D9 DLL and E and B host.exe files. Okay, that's the thing that allows uh, the ENB to run, the, to do all the post-processing effects in Skyrim. The configs is the configurations of your actual post-processing effects. Okay, so this allows it to run, and we're going to use version 2.9. This, on the other hand, is is the um, the actual ENB itself, the Vividian uh, style, which is what we're going to use. And you notice it's got the version text, and this should say 0 0.290, which is what connects it to this. Okay, this is how this little text file is how it knows how to pick up these things. Okay, and then this is our local file where we made all of our changes. You can see there's, there's our 3714. That's, you know, among the other um, changes that we made. Okay, so that's what that all is. And then there's got this palettes thing, which we haven't installed yet. I should say that I didn't run this because Mod Organizer, which is what we run everything through, right, has no knowledge of ENB Manager at this point, um, as far as I'm aware. Okay, so just because we set up Mod Organizer, or sorry, we set up ENB Manager, that doesn't mean it's going to run in game because Mod Organizer doesn't know anything about it yet. And that's something we'll be doing um, in the future. Uh, not too not too long from now. Okay, so that's what that's all about. Hopefully that explains how that all works a little bit better. Because I, I, I did kind of go over it kind of fast last time. So anyway, let's head over to the initial INI tweaks. This is what we're going to do this time. So the following INI tweaks are aimed to increase gameplay and visuals sky in the game to provide a better than vanilla experience. So the SK, SC, I, and I, diverse step to editing SK, SC is to create it, perform the following. Okay, so we're going to go to the Skyrim script extender in the mod organizer mod list. So let's go there. So the mod organizer mod list is under mod organizer, mods, Skyrim script extender. Okay. Oh, okay, well, we're here. Uh, we could get to it from here if you guys wanted to. You could. What he's saying is to is to go to this thing. Here's the Skyrim script extender. Right click, and open in Explorer. Same place. We're in the same exact spot, so it's fine. Okay. Uh, create and enter a folder named SKSE. All right. Create new folder. So we'll call it SKSE. 
the name there is important, and we'll go inside there, and then we'll create and open a text file named skseini. So new. We'll create it as a text document for right now. skse.ini. That's what we'll do. It's going to ask if I want to change the file extension. And yes, we do want to change the file extension. Okay. So now we're going to pop this open in Notepad, and we're going to basically I'm just going to copy this stuff. Right, starting right here. Copy all this. And paste. So general clear and valid registrations one, default heap initial level, maybe 768, and scrap heap size. So we'll just go ahead and file, save, and close. That's all we need to do. So um, this enables self healing of rogue updating scripts and saves and the new memory patch. So there you go. So we just updated SKSE to be a little more. Um, Friendly. All right, Skyrim INI. Skyrim INI controls half the configuration of Skyrim game. Uses the following INI changes to something confirmed broken game. If it exists, add to the bottom, etc., etc. Okay, so we're going to do this through Mod Organizer, guys. So let me kind of make that a window. And we're going to go to um, Tools, which I think is this one. Uh, edit INI. Okay, Skyrim INI is the one we want. Now make sure you're under Skyrim Revisited as well, guys. Don't don't forget to change your profile if you need to, uh, because the INI we change here is going to go under this profile, right? Okay, so here we go. Arrow and bolt aiming tweak. Let's see, can I move this? Yeah, I can move this. Okay, this tweak shifts the point of the aim to center of the aim reticle for arrows and crossbows. So we're going to go under combat. So let's look for combat. There it is. So we just got to add this stuff. Uh, F1, P. In fact, you know what I'm just going to do, guys, just to make it easier so we don't end up screwing something up. I'm just going to copy these four lines. Copy and paste. There we go. Just like such. OK, disable Bethesda splash video tweak. This tweak will allow loading directly into the main menu without the annoying Bethesda splash screen video. <laughs> so there you go. Um, under general, which, where is general? There it is up top. You seem to have an extra line in here. I wonder why. No, I'm not going to mess with it. S intro sequence. Like such. Okay, uh, field of view tweak. The tweak increases the horizontal area visible on the screen. Adjust the angle desired. Recommended setting is below. So we're going to go to display. There it is right here. And these are not in here, so we're going to add them. Copy that. Under display. Here. There you go. Uh, light pop in tweak. This tweak helps prevent light pop in by pushing back the distance at which flicker pulse animation loops begin. So again, under general, let's see. Put that in. Papyrus load time tweak. This tweak allows more time for papyrus scripts to execute when loading a new area. This minimizes errors caused by scripts not finishing before the allotted time has expired. So we'll grab this. And this is under papyrus. So let's find papyrus. So there it is, and let's see. I post load update time. F post load update. Okay, that's already in there. So we just have to change the number to 2000. There we go. Shadow flicker tweak. This tweak fixes the shadow flickering caused by updating sun shadows. So under display which was up here somewhere. F sun shadow update time equals zero. Let's see, is that in here? F sun, nope, I don't see it. Okay, none of these are in here, so let's grab these two flags under display. Nope, didn't copy. Okay, please copy when I hit control C. There we go. All right, there you go, guys. 
that's all we need to do. So save that out. And close. Okay, I just like to quickly make sure everything's in there that's supposed to be in there. Um, yep, looks like it's fine. Yep, good. Okay. What else would I do? Skyrim prefs controls the other half of the configuration for Skyrim game. Each of the following items confirmed as a and etc. So we do the same thing. We're going to do Skyrim prefs this time. This guy. Skyrim prefs. Okay, again, I'm going to move this out of the way a little bit. All right. What does he want us to do? Let's see. Let's go down. See, this is. We're almost done, guys. It's really just about. One, two, there are five tweaks left. Okay. Fade distance tweak. This tweak pushes back the distance of grass and shadows to fade. Minor performance hit display. So it's for display. Oh, everything's all jammed together. That's going to make it difficult. Okay, there's display. F shadow LOD start fade. F shadow LOD start fade is right here. Currently set to 200. We're going to push this back to 400. Grass, F grass, start, fade, distance. F grass, let's find grass. There it is. F grass, start, fade, distance. I'm going to change this to 18,000. Right now it's 17,000, 7,000, so 18,000. Okay, and it's a floating point number. You can tell by the F on front, it's floating. So I'm going to leave the zeros on, even though he didn't put them here. Um, for no reason. I mean, it's not really unnecessary. Floating point rendering tweak. This tweak allows learners to use floating point rendering, enabling better lighting rendering. This is required for ENB series graphics modifications to function. So under display, which was, I think, up here, we are looking for a Boolean float point render target equals one. I don't see it. Let's see if I can hit control F. Um, Boolean float point render target. No, it doesn't appear to have it. Okay, so at the bottom of display, wherever that is, should be looks like here. I'm gonna add it in. B float point render target equals one. There you go. Okay, mouse acceleration tweak under controls. Let's look for controls. There it is. We're looking for B mouse acceleration. Mm, there it is. Set it to zero. Very nice. Uh, shadow map resolution tweak. This tweak decreases ultra shadow resolution with minor visual degradation. However, the general frame range and general stability is large. Display. It's under display. Of course it is, because display is the big one. Okay, it's an integer. Shadow map resolution. Shadow map resolution. There's two of them. Hmm. It's got a map resolution secondary and a resolution primary. That's funny. We've got a primary secondary, then down here we got a, a regular one. So, all right, we're going to change this to 2048. 2048. Okay. Okay, and then finally, the shadow tweaks. Okay, sorry, so shadow tweaks. Uh, we're going to display again, and we're looking for B draw land shadows. Let's see here. Let's see if we can do a B. B draw land shadows. There it is. So we're going to turn that on. And also B trees receive shadows. B trees receive shadows. We're going to turn that on as well. Okay, let me make sure I did all this right. Um, yeah, okay. It's all good. So I'm going to go ahead and save that. Close. Okay, guys, let's just confirm. I like to make sure that everything's working fine. Um, I'm going to start off by going to E drive, and then we're going to go to 
um, Steam, Steam Apps, Common, Skyrim. Okay, so um, yes, that's that's what it should be. These are the original. This is the original INI for this particular um, file. Now this is under our vanilla Skyrim. Remember, we're sp we want to keep Skyrim like vanilla as much as we can, and that's what this is trying to do. So um, I'm not sure, guys, where the Skyrim INI is. Let's see if we can just by name. I don't know if it's out here. Yeah, I don't see it. It's not in here. That's the prefs. I wonder if it's one of these. Yeah, could be. Anyway, so those are the those are the vanilla ones, the ones that the originals. And if we look under Mod Organizer, we should have so under Profiles, Skyrim Revisited. If we go to Skyrim I and I, this should have our changes. Uh, yep, looks good. And this should also have our some changes. So let's look for one that we we know, like for instance, grass, eighteen thousand. Yep, looks good. Okay, the only other thing we could do just to make sure everything's working. Okay, fire up mod organizer and let's run the game. If we've done this right. We skipped the main, we skipped that intro sequence. Very cool. And there you go. Let's go ahead and continue. Okay, and there you go, guys. Now, one thing you should notice right off the bat, look at the grass. You can see grass all the way back to the mountains, which we couldn't do before. Um, so yeah, very nice. So there you go. That's Skyrim with our tweaks in. It's still basically vanilla Skyrim, just with better textures and uh, tweaked out settings. All right, guys, I'll close that down. So there you go. We are done with basically all the pre-mod uh, pre -mod stuff, more or less. We are in the next video going to start installing mods. Um, we've kind of installed mods already. We, we did the the texture mods, right? But we're going to start installing mods that actually affect the game. So, um, yeah. Should be interesting. So, we'll pick that up in the next video. I'll see you guys then. Thanks a lot.